When a baby is born with severe handicaps, doctors and parents privately face agonizing decisions. Should they do all in their power to help it live or allow it to die? This year, two important cases have been sent to court. Today, Dr. Leonard Arthur was found not guilty of the attempted murder of a baby. But in August, a court ordered a life-saving operation for a Mongol baby against the parents' wishes. The people around this table all have experience of similar cases but could not normally speak in public for fear of breaching confidence or distressing families. So in this programme, to allow them to speak openly, they answer questions about imaginary cases which they might well face. The moderator is Paul Sieghart. The audience is made up of medical students. Dr Snodgrass, I'd like you to imagine it's midnight and you've had an urgent call to go to your local hospital because you're the children's specialist there. Um, Mrs. Baker's been brought in because she started to give birth to her baby about three months before she really should have done. And you arrive just at the same time, in fact, as the baby is born. And you can see at once that it's had some bones broken while it was still in the womb. And they seem to have healed, but they've healed rather badly. It has a heartbeat, but two minutes on, it hasn't started to breathe. Have you got some kind of a machine that could make it breathe? Well, we could certainly pass a tube into the trachea and um, introduce oxygen. Would you do that? I think if there were a number of fractures, I wouldn't. What's the sort of maximum life expectancy for a baby like that? Well, it could be um, a few days or a week or two, but um, in certain patients, it might be very much longer than that. How long? Maybe several years. Several years? Hmm. What sort of life would it be leading during those several years? Dreadful. It would be repeated hospitalizations, spontaneous fractures, episodes of pneumonia. All right. Dreadful. Dreadful. Professor Lawler, do you use the machine to start it off breathing? I, I think I would, because even if there is a 2% chance that this child will have a better quality of life than we imagine, and if we're dealing with a condition for which we have no specific treatment today, mm -hmm. and it lives, we might have something in two years' time. Let's suppose that, in fact, it was Dr. Snodgrass in that delivery room, and there were really quite a large number of those fractures. Mr. Terry, supposing it comes to your notice, there was a baby which might have lived for years if the doctor in charge had decided to resuscitate it, but that it chose not to resuscitate it. Do you go to see Dr. Snodgrass? I would tell him that we'd had a complaint. And of course, I think I would go so far as this, even at this very early stage, to tell him that my inquiries were only in their initial stages, he might wish to consider not talking to me until he had his legal advisor, but I think it's very fair that I should tell him early. He's agreed perfectly happily to see you. He's right there. Interview him. Well, now, Dr. Snodgrass, we have had a complaint, and the allegation made to me is that this baby the case of which you know about, was delivered, it was tiny, was not breathing.